Hey, how's it going? This is Brian from Bee's Music Shop, and I'm here at the Anaheim 2024 NAMM Show with Mark from Minerick. Good to see you. Good yeah. to see you, brother. How you doing? I'm great, man. I, uh, I, you know, I always love what you do. You do like some of the most like ornate guitars we see here at at NAMM, yeah. and I, I see you got a couple I haven't seen before, and I was hoping you'd tell me about them. Absolutely, on the far out spectrum, you're at the, you know, central location for that. So we've got a Wizard of Oz, a custom guitar. I'd love yeah. to show you a little bit about that. Awesome. Let's just go on the display case, custom built for the guitar, uh, glass lightning bolts, and extensive glass etching to tie in with the Wizard of Oz theme backing, and it's fully automated LED. You've oh, got wow. fades, blinks, all the different colors in the rainbow, wherever you're gonna display this in your office, your home, you can set the mood with it. Right now we have it on a spinning fade and it, it just rolls through all the colors, depending on what the mood is. So that was a lot of fun. And again, it can pretty much be in any location in your house. You're just treating it like a, a painting. You're buying a painting because it hangs just like one. Yeah. And it's playable artwork, and we're gonna jump into what you can do with our painting versus some of the other ones you might have in your house. Yeah, the inlay work on that's incredible, man. Yeah. If it's okay, I'll, I'll oh, break I it out I of the it. case I love here. it, yeah. Because there's a lot going on with this one. I love the balloon, the uh, detail of that's right? so good. So we've got two major artists that came in to work on this guitar. Craig Frazier, who's a licensed a Disney artist, was on the airbrushing for this one. And Arlene Goulart, she's one of the, mo the, the most incredible inlay artists on the planet. So when you have two artists like that come together, it, it changes, it pushes the needle forward. So the body is a combination of inlay around the sound hole, where you got Dorothy being playful with Toto. Toto's got one of her, her shoes in her mouth. She's trying to grab it back. And you can see she's barefoot on one foot. And the actual sound hole is the O in Oz. And then we've got writing the wonderful Wizard of Oz and Pearl. Now, Craig came in with this uh, theme of the Wizard of Oz. It's kind of a blender. We've got most of this is from the book, the yeah. original canon. But there's a few nods we gave to a little more we gave a little more of a beautiful witch, and I, I know that's a nod to a very famous musical that's uh, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a very playful uh, collaboration of different art pieces inside of this one front um, front artwork. Now, moving to the fretboard, it's going back to the book. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna see a lot of the design, super detail. You have a, a crow, you know, the talking trees, the talking trees actually grabbed the hat off the scarecrow and you can see his brain because he finally got one, of course, so oh that's God. great. The lion, yellow brick road, courage, you've got the, the woodsman, the tin man up top, and then the, the witch up top, more of the traditional of the looking a little more um, not so happy witch. And the Tin Man, is, is, he, is he metal? Yes, that's, a, that's actually a metal inlay. And yes, it was very difficult to do. But I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to have to uh, water it down by using pearl and trying to make it look like it. So yeah, that's actually metal, that and it, you know, it came out so good. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna spin here to the side. We've got the yellow brick road in a color shifting paint. The paint actually disappears. See, gone, and there it's back, gone, back, um, on both sides. So. Uh, we it, It's got a little bit of sparkle to it, but we wanted to bring in the yellow brick road in a big way, so we use the sides of the guitar with this uh, trans-shifting paint. Super cool what they're doing with paint technology these yeah, days, so really we're trying cool. to get involved with that. And we're going to go ahead and flip to the back, and this is a black line art that's what sim similar to what you'd find in the book, the original yeah. canon, and you can see it's a completely different art style than what's on the front. Craig Frazier, the uh, uh, Disney artist, he's so versatile. He can go from something on the front to the back, like completely rethink it. It almost looks like a different artist. Yeah. And he also used copper leaf, which is similar to what you find on fire trucks, a gold leaf. Yeah. We just went copper. He spun all of the copper leaf. It just, it, it shifts and, and lights up. It's just beautiful. And I'm going to go and tilt it forward. And we have a carve on the heel stock giving a nod to the man behind the, the curtain. That's so cool. Yeah, and uh, there's abalone on all the glue seams on the body. That's a lot of abalone. Now, I'm gonna go around to the front again. 
I don't know if we can get in there and light it up. Can I you can see, see the it. base? I can see it, yeah. We, we inlaid the inside down of the body in down in the sound hole of the man behind the curtain, the wizard. Mm -hmm. if, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it with uh, shadow-wise, um, if you can get it in there. Can you see it? You know, we're, we're not really leaving any stone unturned on, super on cool. these custom guitars. So this is, you know, if you want something that no one else will ever have, and you want artists that are world famous, and it's rare to get a bunch of artists working on one thing. Yeah. That's where um, I've been very blessed to have these friendships and relationships where people are willing to work together on one on one piece. So that's something we're able to bring together for the Minarik line of customs that not a lot of people get to do. I'm gonna put this one back. Absolutely. There. Okay, so thank you for letting me give you a little bit of a deeper dive on the the, the Wizard of Oz guitar. Are right, there's a couple other wild customs we have here? Are you yeah, interested? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. You want to go over to the heavy metal, or I know you got something on the mansion I last year. Loved, I was, we did do something on it last year. I always love when you talk about it, though. It's such cool. I heard you might not have it much longer. There have been a, two people that came to the booth that uh, they're doing really big uh, haunted mansion themed thing in their life and they're looking to, to add that because that's a, that's something you'll never be able to get again so I put a pretty good price tag on it but it looks like that might not even hold so it, it might go away this year this might be the last time we'll be able to display it because someone will own it privately yeah. but I tried my best I put a really decent price on that but it's not holding and I mean that's great for everybody else that owns one of the 13 yeah but um, of course you've got the, the licensed Disney art. You actually couldn't buy this from Minerick, even though we made it. You had to go to Walt Disney's Disney Honor store, and, yeah. and the one in Florida carried some, and you had to go directly to Disney to buy these. Um, this is number 10 of the 13. Up on the headstock, each headstock plate was different. Each one had a different number in it. So that's 10, so we you didn't even have to number them. They were numbered under the finish so to speak, this being the wrought iron at the at the ride done in recon stone. And then of course, all the licensed artwork. Now Disney, their legal department and their art department ran through this whole guitar. There isn't anything on here that they didn't sign off on. And they actually had us change a few things because they weren't acceptable. And they're so specific about the era and the design yeah. and everything has to be just right. So. Um, it was a really big, big, big ordeal to get through, but the end result was magic. So let me flip it around to the back, because yeah. there's some great artwork on there too. This being, um, this is the uh, uh, wallpaper yeah. art. Now, there is black light art hidden in this. If I put a black light on this, all the eyes on all the little creatures light up green. Really? And you don't see that until the, you put a black light on it. And um, of course, all of the, the texturing on the neck and headstock. And there's just a tiny little bit of sparkle in that when you get yeah. some, get a certain set of light. deep at the heel. Yeah, it goes down. exactly. Yeah. And then if you look, and it's bat on the back of the body, we put abalone binding on the back too. And if you look at the back of the guitar, we, 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 we reworked this top area. It looks like a ghost, like arching over with its hands like that. Can you see it? There's the head, there's yes. the arm. And there's the hand. It's like a ghost head. Uh, what would you call it? Uh, outline. Yeah. So we kind of we kind of tweak the back of the guitar to make that happen. That's the only scroll model guitar we make that has that. Are the ones from the the Mansion series, which were 13. You got the they got the texturing on the sides as well. Looks like velvet. Yeah, it, it was a lot of work, but that process. There's three or four steps to get it to look like that. So. Poor Craig had to put in so much work on these. I love the I love the little Mickey, the hidden ears. Yeah, there's hidden Mickey. Oh, thank you for the heads re reminding me. Something we did that was really neat. If you had number 13, number 13, there's 13 hidden Mickeys. This one is number 10. It has 10 hidden Mickeys. If you had number seven, seven. So oh, wow. you have the amount of the number it was in the order is the amount of hidden Mickeys you have on your guitar. So each one is really super unique. We hit so many Easter eggs in this. I even forget how many there are. So thank yeah. you for that. 10. 
right in this <laughs> yes, right you got me you got me and even like if i put the black light on the moon there's another face in that moon that pops out that you can't see with a regular paint. That's so, so it's cool. it's yeah, it's great. And Disney really, really, really enjoyed the, the the partnership. I have a really good feeling that we're gonna be able to do something with Disney again on another iconic guitar. Nothing's in stone. I'm just saying that it went really, really well with them. I'm guessing we'll leave it at that. I'm gonna guess a pirate one. Oh, oh, I was just trying to think what other iconic ride I could see you do it. Yeah. You don't say anything. I'm not, I, just, I just made a guess. I'm not denying anything you just said. Yeah. It's either that or the, the Country Bear Jamboree. You just, you just do a blood guitar. Blood. I, well, <laughs> I, you, you, might, you, may, you might be psychic. Okay. We'll see like that. You might. I don't know. Maybe we're tapping yeah, we'll into, see. Your, we'll see. into the private vault. Yes. <laughs> And then there's um, one more guitar. I'm at a, the heavy metal guitar, which yeah. is definitely worth chatting about. What's the double neck here while we're, well, we can't sure. quite get there anyways? Maybe um, we can get to this you, guy. It's a goddess double neck, and I put those two fangs on the bottom of the double neck guitar. That's something I only did for the goddess double neck. And the fretboards are called the Solid Pearl Board and Headstock Place. They're angel based, called the Shy Angel. And it's got a beautiful uh, vine of life with chalices and flowers. And one of the challenges with doing a solid pearl board, even if you put abalone contrasting, okay, is that it disappears. Yeah. So we left a micro thin edge of, of the ebony from the original board showing to be like a black outline to help it pop. And yeah. that did it. And um, the frets themselves actually go into the ebony wood and we leave the ebony just big enough that the tang of the fret covers it up. So you ha you're still getting that great ebony tone wood, yeah. but when it's all together, it just looks solid pearl. Yeah. So, and, and, so you get work. the beautiful, but you also retain the tone. Because if all you do is make it all pearl and you float them in epoxy, epoxy sounds like crap. So you gotta be mindful. If you see a really high-end guitar with a lot of inlay, ask them, hey, did you float those in epoxy? Yeah. If they did, you know, you I, I'd play it first. Yeah, yeah. Just saying. But I'd love if we go around this side, let's get to that heavy metal. I'll let's talk a little bit about it. that. Here, you lead and I'll follow. I'll let you get in position. Can you get to see that one? I'll let you get yeah, in yeah, there. We'll, do that we'll stand behind you. There you go. So this is uh, the heavy metal guitar based on the movie comic book magazine, all of the patented and trademark artwork that goes along with Tarna and that iconic storyline uh, from the 80s. So we were um, approached by a, a very amazing individual named Lexi uh, who owned all of the trademarks. And he actually, well, he wanted to do a guitar that was based on his proprietary artwork. I, I was familiar with it. I thought, wow, what a fantastic idea. And I said, would you be okay if we make you one, that we make one for Minerik as well at the same time? Of course, I'll cover the cost of that. He agreed, and we started doing the, the, the prototype <laughs> and all the artworking on it. Went back and forth, came up with the final design, the body style, everything came out incredible. And those colors, they're so vivid, yeah. so bright, they really pop. There is actually like a secondary scene on there that if you hit it with a black light, it comes out. Things you can't see that are part of the, um, the storyline. So this is another one of those black light reactive paint guitars where there's another story to be told. Wow. Now, the, the fretboard, of course, they've got Tarna Sword, Heavy Metal, and the lightning from the, the animated movie crackling off of the board heading towards the headstock. And on the top, you've got Tar Tarna's tattoo that's seen on her in the movie at the top of the the board done with a reconstituted stone and brass. Wow. Now, I'm. we have a really beautiful case here that's done in faux riveted World War II bomber metal from the airplane. Yeah. They, we 3D printed the bomber's um, head and his, uh, his flying cap that has the Loch Nahr green glow behind them on each one. And then 3D printed- I was printed trying to remember the name of that Loch Nahr, yeah, Loch, Loch Nahr. Nahr. And then the heavy metal um, is also 3D printed, with has lightning flashes 
for a, a 3D program for the LED lights. Now I'm gonna grab the guitar and turn it around. There's some artwork on the back I wanted That's to show you, if, if you don't mind. Can we get you to scoot forward just a little bit? Can we get you to scoot forward just a little bit? Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. The back of the guitar is also done in, in the faux bomber metal with bullet holes. Did that all the way up and down. This one was also done by Craig Frazier, our Disney artist friend. Sides of the guitar. That that ties in with the case. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. It, it's just, it's a real work of art. There's only two of these in existence. The one that Lexi has and this one, other than ones that, you know, someone would approach him to purchase based on him owning the proprietary art. It would be the same thing as like Walt Disney. Yes. You wouldn't come to us to get this. You'd go to the, the Lexi and his proprietary ownership of that and would purchase one of these from him. So as far as there are only two prototypes made, That's his so and this cool. one. So it's a real gift to be able to display something like this at NAMM. Because usually these never get seen. Yeah. They either get destroyed or they're in a, a case somewhere in a closet or an attic. Yeah. So it's super cool to have something like this here. We have a couple of new guitars, new brand new shapes Absolutely. that we released in our mass production line. So a little more affordable. Um, this is the uh, Flying Dutchman. It's a semi hollow with, of course, it's got the hook and curve type design that I, I love. Most of my stuff is like that. Um, but what I did with this is I made the center bar inside the guitar wider. Okay, so you can drive a ton of distortion through this and it doesn't whistle and feed back like other semi-hollow guitars. Yeah. But you still get that beautiful like angelic vocal tone on the high notes and the pretty acoustics that everybody associates with having the sound holes on the guitar. So I'm super happy about the way this turned out. All of the, I know one of them's missing here, but all of the colors that we have and a Calypso, which is just stunning. That's a really cool. Ghost bit. Ship Gray. And I can't read the name on the last one there. Um, oh, oh, you were oh sorry, Crimson Sky on the end. The, the paint work on these on top of the look was fantastic. We have a, a hook and a curve and claw fretboard inlay that looks like a vine. And I was able to finally get one of my ornate headstocks in on the production line. Normally I'd only be doing these on the custom one-offs, but I got a, a curve and claw headstock in on a production model. Beautiful design, Art Nouveau, which I'm a fan of things that um, just look a little different than everyone else. Um, so gorgeous flower, like a jazz headstock influence there with a Minaric M. So uh, in totality, um, everything has a purpose and a tie-in, super comfortable to play. Um, and there, I'm using VR Nitro pickups from Tesla, which sound just flipping phenomenal in this guitar. Um, very warm, super warm. So um, if, whether you're driving distortion or you're playing jazz or anything in between, this is so versatile and it does things that a solid body can't do. Yeah. So I, I know obviously I'm hugely biased, but this is such a great design sonically. It's just about getting you into the look because these horns, there's nothing like it in the industry. Oh, it's super cool. Like super, super unique. Yeah. So just getting everybody, you know, to be different and be new takes more work. Yeah. You know, everybody runs for the middle where it's nice and safe. Well, you've been here a few years. I don't believe in safe. Uh, you know, I'm taking risks on the regular. So it also makes things more exciting too, yeah, yeah. which makes it worth the risk, right? So you're always gonna see a cutting edge. So cutting edge, can we move to the Shakti those model? Are cool. I really like the way those look, they're it's so the, neat. It's the only guitar in the industry that has a reverse arch top. It actually goes down into the body. Now, of course, there's beautiful waveforms here that, and, and a whale's tail, that's on purpose to ping you. Uh, that's a mental tweak to help get you in a, a really great place to be creative. But as far as the tech, because there's less maple, or this in case it would be birch, because those are like drum shells, yeah, yeah. super oh, resonant. Yeah. So that helps with my te the technology for my chambering. Because you've got this one uh, tone bar up here, the, the vibration hits that. It doesn't have to travel through as much of the top to get to the back mahogany wood. 
So it's vibrating more of the mahogany, which is a deeper, richer tone, which then causes this to have a different sound than the other guitars. It's beautiful, but it's different and it's new. So the whole reason behind the reverse arch top was to activate the back body wood to sound off more than it does on a regular guitar, where it's just a regular sandwich. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, I got the idea. Now, how do I make it look beautiful and, and be visually appealing? And, and this is how I came up with this. So um, there's a bunch of things in this particular one. It was the inaugural edition. I have angel numbers on the fretboard position markers. I'm only gonna do this once for this guitar. I'm changing the fretboard after this initial run. So if you have one of the angel number boards, you'll know it's one of the first very small batch. The Shakti, which is what it's called, which is spiritual energy, um, uh, that's what that means. And I've got a person in the meditation position with all the chakra points in the body for the headstock. Um, beautiful guitar. Uh, tech is there, uh, it's very vibey. Uh, the pickups are Alnico 5s. Um, somebody says, well, what do those sound like? I say, well, if you like Slash's tone, yeah. you're gonna freaking love this <laughs> because that's uh, he loves Alnico 5s and that rock tone. Yeah. That's what this is gonna do all, all day. Yeah. And we've got three beautiful colors, Ocean Burst, Electric Sunset, and Amethyst Mist. The uh, purple so cool. Amethyst Mist, we're almost sold out of those. That's been really popular. That's the last one. And then we'll just have this electric orange, the, um, the electric electric sunset so cool. and the, the ocean burst. So yeah, we've got a couple really cool new things. Um, we're gonna have even more extreme designs that are gonna release this year, like something like the Medusa, okay. which is way outlandish. I, I went even further. So it's even crazier, and I'll release that this year. You're basically a mad scientist of like Perloid, I well, think. Well, there has to be a balance. <laughs> if I get too crazy, then I'm out of business, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I have to balance it with a little bit of practicality, but a lot of creativity. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. Um, but I, I really love when you come here to this booth. Oh, dude, I love because it you, I don't have to put a filter on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Everybody in your audience gets it. Well, it's fun, man. You know, it's like, you, you I, I like, you know, I've seen you, know, I've been in this industry 26 years and I've seen your guitars around. And a few years ago when I sat down and we interviewed you, I really like, I it was such changing to hear you talk about it. Yeah. And it made so much of it just click with me that I, I it was great. I love hearing you talk about it. You're so passionate about Thanks. it, but it's, yeah. it, it's fun. I mean, you can see you love what you do, you know? Yeah, and I, I like helping people reach their goals and music heals people. Yeah. So for my way to help kind of be a healer in this world was to help people reach their musical goals because they're out there making music. And trust me when I tell you, it doesn't matter what kind of music Music you make you make this world a better place please don't stop whether it's guitars or drums or whatever you do you are making this world a better place to live in and I'm very uh, passionate and emotional about this part we need you we need you to keep doing new I don't care what your day job is or what age you are make music even if it's a little bit make it a part of your life because not only are you gonna make your life more beautiful, you are gonna change the frequency of every single person on this planet. Even if you pull it out on the couch and you jam, that go that radiates out everywhere, even if you're in your home. So you don't have to be on TV. You don't have to be on a podcast. Just making that vibration happen changes our frequency as a human race. So please don't quit. That was my down the rabbit hole pitch. You're, I just say now. music's supposed to be fun. We need to remember that sometimes, but that's way better what you said. <laughs> no, I, I'm all about fun too. <laughs> yeah. And let's there, we teamed up and, and boom, out of the there park. There you go. I always joke, I'm the third best uh, cat themed music store. So, you know, hey Mark, thanks for talking Thank to you. Today. Thank I you everybody. It. Good to see you all. Take care. Thank Damn you. 2024. <laughs>